Clemson won the toss. They deferred. Wake Forest will receive. Robert Gunn will kick off, and he'll send this one right out of the back of the end zone, and we'll get a chance to see this Wake Forest offense led by Mitch Griffiths, at quarterback. Yeah, and Mitch Griffiths, you know, he's a guy who, right, he's been playing behind Sam Hartman. He had a couple games last year when Sam Hartman was dealing uh, with some medical issues in the beginning of the year, and he, he he's a good quarterback, and he can make all the throws, especially when he gets outside the pocket, rolling to his right. He has really good accuracy on the move. It's the decision-making that coach Clawson needs to be better. Throw the ball away at times. Live to play another down. That's been a focus over this bye week for this offense. Let's see how Mitch Griffiths responds. They had three interceptions and they gave up nine sacks last in their last loss to Georgia Tech. That was two weeks ago. They give to Justice Ellison. Trying to follow his blockers. Stopped after a gate of three, Jeremiah Trotter. That won't be the last time we call on 54's number in orange. No, and I mean, we talk about the front seven for this Clemson team. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. and Barrett Carter, you know, his buddy next to him, they are, I mean, they're great. I mean, they are really good linebackers. They come downhill, they're rangy, they're, they can cover tight ends. It's some of the best in the league. Griffiths to throw. No, he pulls it down and runs it. Nice run by Mitch Griffiths to pick up the first down, dodging Clemson tacklers and picking up eight yards. I mean, and, and like this is the offense, right? This is the slow mesh. Okay, you wait, you wait. And then uh, you, you see Barrett Carter just blow up the middle, but Mitch Griffiths, he has that elusive nature to him. He's not known as a runner, but he can squirm around. <laughs> Good job picking up a first down. Now he's got DeMont Claiborne in the backfield with him. Again, there's that slow mesh, and Claiborne busts through the first level. Picks up about six. Andrew Makuba from a safety spot comes up to make the tackle, but a good run on first down. Yeah, and, and you're going to see, a, you know, kind of a two backs in there. It's going to be Justice Ellison, who we saw in the first carry, and then DeMont Claiborne, who, you know, when you talk to Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, he lit up and said, this guy is special. He's a special talent. Griffiths to throw. Pocket collapsing. He's got room to run if he wants it, and he does. Flips it out to Williams. And he's going to pick up good yardage. Jeremiah Trotter tracked him down, but not before Williams picked up first down yardage. Now let's make sure this is a lateral. Yeah, and uh, man, talk about ball carrier vision. How about this vision for Mitch Griffiths? And that does look like it might have been forward. We'll see if they review it, but got a little push pass out there. Creative. Who knows if it was legal, though? Oh, and the false start gives them another opportunity to look at it. So you know Wake Forest trying to go fast to get that play off. False start, offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty, first down. Jerry Magalade is our ref for today with this ACC crew. Matty Goldman let's, offside. Let's take another look at this and see. This is the, uh, well, that's the false start. We're going to try to get another look at that pitch. And, you know, obviously they've been looking at it upstairs and don't feel like it's necessary to, to challenge the ruling. So here we go. And now they do. <laughs> we wait to hear from Jerry Magalanis. The previous play is under further review. Our replay official, Rusty Acree, up here in the booth. Wants to get another look at it, or another couple of looks at it, as we will here in a moment. This type of pitch, it's hard to pitch backwards, right? You know, just the momentum of the ball a lot of times goes forwards. Tough to tell from that angle, but... This is going to be the best angle we have. So he pitches it right at the line. And that's clearly three that's yards a, in front. That's so, a forward. You know, it's, he pitches it from the 45-yard line, Chris, and it, it's at least the 47 that is caught. Yeah, that was a 19-yard pickup. Beautifully done, uh, except for the three yards forward pass. Yeah, except for it being illegal. Yeah. <laughs> so Dabo wants to make sure he gets a full explanation. Yep. He will in time, as we will. And, you know, I kind of like the fact that they let it play out, right? 
You know, they let it play out. Coach Clawson's pleading his case right now. Yeah, and good coverage on the back end. No one's open. Mitch Griffiths has a couple extra yards to go. He could have picked up the first down on his own without pitching it. And I think that's some of the awareness that Dave Clawson's talking about with his quarterback. Hey, look, we don't need to make the biggest play. We just need to pick up a first down so that we have more plays to drive down the field. If you want that to be a, a lateral, you're going to have to almost Mahomes-esque yeah. cross your body and throw that thing behind you because your momentum is just going to take you forward. Yeah. Yep, let's see here again from the 45 yard line. That's a that's pretty cut and dry. Yep. And the optics, right? Because Mitch Griffiths keeps running and it winds up in front of the guy who receives the ball when the guy who receives the ball catches it. It looks like it could be a backwards pass, but it was not. That'll be a loss of downs as well as a yardage penalty. Well, that's probably what our officiating crew right now is working out as to where to place the ball, what the clock is going to be. It's creative. I mean, that's, that's, there's a C on his chest for a reason. You know, he's a leader. That's a that's not really a, a move you see a lot of times from a first year starting quarterback. He, he's got a lot of confidence in his ability. Well, you and I talked about it in the open too, and we saw it last year when these two teams went up and down the field against each other in that overtime win at Wake Forest for Clemson. Big plays. If you're Wake Forest, you're going to need some big plays today. Yep. Yep, you are. And you're going to need to make things happen, but you got to pick your time. You got to pick that opportunity to do it and end up being safe, but illegal. After further review, the quarterback went beyond the line of scrimmage and threw a forward pass. That's an illegal forward pass. Will be penalized in the 45-yard line. Five yards, loss of down. It's third down. Also, the five yards for the previous play, a false start, will not be penalized. All right, thank you very much, Jerry. Let's wipe out that false start. Let's move the ball back to where the foul occurred at the 45. Five yards from there and a yep. loss of down. So it's third down and roughly six here. But how about that? If there was no false start, they could have gotten away with that play. But here you go. Now is when you see the look at the line of scrimmage for Clemson. You got Barrett Carter up there. You got Jeremiah Trotter up there. Everyone is showing pressure. And there are only six blockers back there for Mitch Griffiths. Griffiths to throw. Here comes the pressure up the middle, and he gets hit, and it forces an errant pass. There is just nothing you can do about that. Man to man across the board, a zero pressure. And look, everyone comes and Bear Carter, number zero, good inside move, but there's just not enough blockers to account for him. Really good job. And Wes Goodwin, so such confidence in his defense and such confidence in the guys on the outside that he's willing to do that. Good execution. It's going to be a tough day for Mitch Griffiths if he winds up at third down and long. Griffiths coming off holding his, looking like he was holding his ribs a little bit after taking that hit. Ivan Mora to punt for Wake Forest. Tyler Brown, electrifying freshman, makes the catch, the fair catch at the 20. 40 yard kick for Mora. Clemson will take over from their own 20. Still scoreless in the early going. Kate Klubnik. A lot was expected of him, and uh, uh, rightfully so. Yep. He's the quarterback at Clemson. Every coach we talked to this week, Mark, said he's just getting better and better every week. Not that he was poor in, his, in the opener this week, this year, but he just seems to be getting better. Yeah, getting better and better. And you know, he's one of those guys, right? He, you know, number one dual threat quarterback coming out of coming out of high school. He's got all the intangibles, like, but he has been making some plays over the past couple weeks that have been really, really impressive. Design run. Trying to follow his blockers into the hole. We'll pick up maybe a yard. Justin Williams on the tackle for Wake Forest. Yeah, Club Nick, you know, he's a guy, he's fast, right? He's fast with his legs, and he doesn't have to use it that frequently, but you do notice the speed when he gets outside the pocket. He's another guy, like Mitch Griffiths, who is really good at throwing on the run and can create plays that weren't there initially by moving his feet. Goes to his progression over the middle. Big oh, hit. Oh, 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 Troy Stolano comes down with it. Malik Mustafa is there to drop him in his tracks. Yeah, Malik Mustafa. 
the leader of this back end defense. Watch number three, form tackle, pick him up around his knees and drop him. Very sure tackler from that secondary on third and two. A lot of options for Clemson. They'll give it to Shipley. And I don't think he got there. Oh. He did not. He's short. How about that play? Jacob Roberts. If you don't know that name by now, Jacob Roberts is one of the best linebackers in the ACC. Transferring from North Carolina A&T. And since he's been a Demon Deacon, he has just been phenomenal. He had an unbelievable game versus Old Dominion with five sacks. But watching him down and down, down after down, he's just a consistent, fast twitch, good linebacker as they keep their punt safe on the field, preparing for any fake that Clemson might have up their sleeve. It'll be fourth down and one. Aiden Swanson is back to punt for the Tigers. Taylor Morin to receive this kick, standing at his own 22. High, good kick. Morin's going to be forced to call a fair catch at the 17, and he does after a 54-yard boot off the toe of Aiden Swanson. We're scoreless here early in Death Valley. Homecoming in Clemson. We're still scoreless here in Death Valley, but take out this shot that Mitch Griffiths took before that last at the, the last play of that last drive. We'll keep an eye on him as some of the backups were warming up their arms while Clemson had the football. Mitch Griffiths, he is a, I mean, his middle name should be tough because he is a tough player. But those things, those can accumulate. He's back in to start this drive, the second of the day for Wake Forest, and he throws it deep, trying to get it to Banks. Misses him at midfield as he took a hit again as he got rid of the ball. And a flag down in the backfield. That's right where he got hit. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, number 54. 15 yard penalty, first down. That's Jeremiah Trotter. Let's see where this hit impacted Mitch Griffiths. Yeah, and watch where he throws the ball from. Just about a yard behind where the initial line of scrimmage is, and that, you know, it, it's just a little bit of a thing. And to me, that's not forcible contact to the head of the neck. And, you know, you can debate that all you want, but. There is some gray area. There is some gray area. And any contact is not necessarily a 15 yard penalty, but in the eyes of the officials, that was enough. Yep. Fresh set of downs now for Wake Forest. Claiborne. <laughs> this is the football picked up by Clemson. Oh, here we go! Makuba, he's gonna score! Wow, what a hit by Trotter! And that ball felt like a decade before it was picked up. Makuba saw it and just ran it back. The fumble recovered by the defense, returned for a touchdown. Talk about the defense being opportunistic and Demond Claiborne trying to pick up a few extra yards, but that hit by Trotter and then being dumped looks oh, oh Justin Maskell, yeah, that's coming back. Then that's kind of why it took so long for the ball to be scored out. They're gonna look at that and that one, that one, and that one's coming back. His back definitely hit before the ball came out. Definitely. Well, Gatto's excited up here <laughs> for the little defensive action. I mean, that, that is what Clemson has done so well all season long in their three wins. Yep. Is not only creating turnovers, but turning them into points. And it was a hit very similar to that by Justin Maskell, number seven, against Garrett Schrader last week for Syracuse. That caused a fumble that was turned the tide of early in that game. This one should be pretty easy to overturn. Still possession, possession. Hits his back, and now it comes out. After further video review, the runner was down before losing gain. Ball's at the 34-yard line, second down. The clock will start on my signal. 80,000 here in attendance today, unhappy with it, but that's the right call. Yeah. Sure is. And, you know, Dave Clawson was holding his breath. down. It's clad in orange. That was great eye contact by that girl. She, camera. she saw that camera. Yep. That camera hit nearly as close as it appeared. No, it's not. 
Second down and eight. Ken Claiborne just patiently awaiting what little hole there was to open up, and he squirts through it, twists and turns his way for about eight yards, and another first down for Wake Forest. His feet kept driving, just continued to chop, to work his way forward. These have been some hard yards. He is a walking muscle. Yes. He's like one <laughs> solid muscle from head to toe. He must have about 3% body fat. And he puts it to good use here. Again, squirting through. Yeah. It looked like he had nothing, and he still picks up a couple of yards. <laughs> I tell you what, those things, they can frustrate a defense. You feel like you have him down, and Justin Maskell almost had him around the waist. And it's just that forward lean by these running backs. They're so good at that explosive pop through the line of scrimmage. Right now, Wake Forest staying with Claiborne, riding the hot hand, stretches it, can't get anything this time around, gets maybe a yard. It'll bring up third down, and a long seven, we'll call it eight. And last time, Wes Goodwin drew up the zero pressure. Barrett Carter was the one who got pressure on Griffiths. Here they go again, right around the line of scrimmage. This looks more like a zone pressure unless Crowder drops out. They're coming with five. Griffiths has some time. Ball deflected out of his hands and falls incomplete as he was trying to get it to Wesley Grimes. Toriano pride on coverage. And this pass was once again deflected. Yeah, and that floated kind of up there. It was a good effort by Wesley Grimes to try to come back to the football, but even better job by Pride to knock that one down. Griffiths, Man, it's, it's been a defensive battle. Griffiths has had absolutely no time to no, throw no. when he drops back. So Mora once again to punt. Trying to pin Clemson deep. Another good kick from Mora. Brown is just going to run away from it. Takes a Wake Forest bounce. Going to roll inside the 15 before finally being touched down at about the 13 quality effort 48 yards on the kick zero on the return we'll see the tigers on offense again when we come back perslick loves it it's a defensive effort here at death valley football there football there see perry it was 45 to 38 then dj wayne finding bull collins to tie things up then davis allen in the second overtime and the magic ran out for Sam Hartman as Clemson hung on. 14 consecutive wins in this series now. And as you look at the all-time series, these two teams extremely familiar with each other over the years here in the ACC. And it has been one-sided. As you see, 2008, the last time Wake Forest was able to get the win, they haven't won here since 1998. Bill Jim Grove days for the Deeks. Yep. And last, you know, last time out, Last year, really, Clemson dominated the first half, but only led 20 to 14 at halftime because they had a lot of defensive penalties early in that game. Nice catch out of the backfield by Will Shipley. Number one in orange can do it all, Mark. Yeah, he can, and he's been doing it all for a long time, right? Anytime you get, number, you see number one in the game, you think consistency. You know, he's a high motor guy. He's got great hands, as you just saw, out of the backfield. Really good and shifty. Runner and oh, that's ball on the ground. And Wake Forest picks it up. Wow. Kevin Pointer picks up the fumble, and the Deeks are set up. And we've talked about it so much. We talked about it with both coaches all week, and they circled it. It's cliche, I know, but turnovers have killed Clemson in their two losses, and it's a great start for Wake Forest in keeping that script going. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's the exchange. It's that part of this. You know, zone read, RPO, whatever you want to call it, that's on the quarterback, right? Will Shipley's going to act like he gets the ball no matter what, but Klubnik has to have a firm grip on it if he does decide to pull. And now Mitch Griffiths is set up really nicely to try to capitalize and get a touchdown here. Fans on their feet here at Memorial Stadium. Ooh, bone set they're in. Tate Carney in the back. He gets the handoff. 
just try to move the pile, and he does for about three. Peter Woods, the true freshman, making the tackle for Wake or for Clemson, rather. There's Tate Carney. Older brother Cade had a great career at Wake Forest. Oh, phenomenal year. And, you know, Cade Carney, he was really the first back at Wake to really master that slow mesh. And every, everybody's been kind of modeled after him since then. And Tate Carney kind of the bruiser in this backfield trio. He's in there again. Second down and goal. This time the other side. Nope, Griffiths keeps it. Inside the five, down to the two. RJ Mickens makes the tackle from his strong safety spot. Third and goal. Two runs against one of the best rush defenses in the nation. I feel like you want to get Mitch Griffiths on the edge, get him rolling out to his right. Try to hit someone in the flat, but this is a big, big down. Griffiths rolls, throws to the corner of the end zone, too high for Banks. Decision time here, partner. Hey. Griffiths looks like he's staying on the field. Yeah, and man, it's it's so hard to walk away without points in this situation. And that's the opportunity that's about to occur, right? And or the flip side, you put six on the board and you send a message early. Yeah, you know, that's... That you can power it into the end zone from two yards out. You're right. You know what? I'm interested to see what this call is because you know, we just got Griffiths on the edge and did not connect. He's looking to throw again. Has time. Trying to run it in. Now he throws to the corner. Banks was open but couldn't come down with it. Griffiths looks like he was going to take it in himself. Might not have been able to get in there. Saw Banks waving his arms in the back of the end zone and just couldn't connect with yep, it. Yep, and all you do there, you don't score points and you cheer, you get this crowd into the game. Their defense just had a huge effect. Stopped them on fourth and goal. Turnover deep in their own territory doesn't come back to haunt them as we're still scoreless here past the midway point of this first quarter. But the Tigers now on offense deep in their own territory. Klubnik from his own end zone hands it to Shipley, just trying to move the pile and get him out of a little trouble. Three yards. Let's take a look at that fourth down play, Mark. Yeah, watch number 30, the back leaking out. Oh boy, he missed him. He had him open and just tried to make a play. He had Banks in the back of the end zone as well. But just the way that this Tiger defense has been flying around, it just, it's like a blur to Mitch Griffiths right there. And huge, huge stop. Took another shot in the ribs this time from Justin Maskell, defensive end before he came off. Club to throw, has a receiver and just can't find him. Oh man, well both these quarterbacks need to just settle down a tiny bit. Because he had Tyler Brown, and if this guy catches this ball, Mark, he's running maybe for days. Yep, Nick Anderson, the, the nickelback blitzed and just vacated that zone. And Malik Mustafa is a great safety, but he is not who you want covering Tyler Brown, who is poised at a All-American <laughs> type season as a freshman. Another third down for this Clemson offense. Bo Collins in motion, Klubnik to throw. Pressure up the middle. He just avoids it and tries to get it out to Shipley, incomplete, but Klubnik did all he could to avoid a safety that time as Jasheen Davis was applying the pressure. Well, I can't tell you how big that is. Right for Wake Forest defense. Watch number 30, good job on the loop. And he really had him. He, he had him for a sack, and Klubnik does a good job of just getting it out getting in the direction of a receiver, so there is no intentional grounding, no safety, but only giving up three yards for Wake Forest defense. I mean, that is a huge win. Now you're gonna get the ball back with a short field, a chance to go back down and try to get more points, or any points for that matter. Aiden Swanson punting from the back of his own end zone. Moran's gonna have a chance to return this one from his 43. Midfield, 
Dropped at the 45, so Wake Forest, no points after that turnover, but an opportunity now again offensively inside Clemson territory. Coming up at 8 o'clock Eastern tonight, number 17 Miami hosting Georgia Tech. You can watch it here on the ACC Network, also on the ESPN app. You can check it out anywhere. Our crew is down there. The huddle crew is in Miami. Georgia Tech trying to bounce back from a very disappointing loss last weekend at home to Bowling Green. We'll see what happens. Teams in this league this year, Mark, are bouncing back or dropping yep. down. It's crazy how week to week you get a different team. You don't know what you're going to get. No, you're seeing a lot of inexperienced players get a lot more time, right? They're not necessarily young, but more inexperienced. And, and when they gain some of that experience, watch out, because they can really play like this pass right here for Mitch Griffiths. Finding Wesley Grimes, that's a sophomore, true sophomore. Yeah, and, you know, finally had a little bit of time in the pocket and a good job of picking up some major yardage. Back in business again. Watch pressure here. Claiborne takes the handoff. Mark, it's hard to describe his running style between the tackles. He picks up five yards. I mean, he's, he's listed at 5'9", 200. And we talked about how he's got about 3% body fat. But I feel like as there's an injured Clemson player on the field, nobody gets a clean shot at him. No, they don't. And it's kind of his, his start-stop. He's got really good short area quickness. And so he can kind of put his foot in the ground, stop on a dime, kind of brush off a tackle. That looks like Jalen Phillips, the free safety. Let's see how it happened here. Looks like that right... I don't know, man. That right ankle possibly got twisted up underneath him. He's walking off okay now, but. That's nah, his shoulder. Yeah, you see that, that, little, ugh, that little move. Yep, as he bumps shoulders with half of his teammates coming off the field. He's testing it, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, you can see that right arm. He's just letting it hang a little bit. So Dabo probably putting in one of his young players. There are so many true freshmen that might, might play in this game, especially defensively for Clemson. I mean, their last couple of recruiting classes on the defensive end, so talented. Second down and six. Again, Clemson showing pressure up the middle. They give the Claiborne. Keeps it inside, down close to the 10. First down. It'll be first and 10. He didn't quite get to the 10, so Wake will be able to pick up a first down at about the one-yard line without having to go into the end zone on this set of downs. Here they're, they're right back at it. I mean, I've been impressed with the way Wake Forest has been able to run the football. Good job of getting pullers around and finding their open lanes. Claiborne trying to find some sort of a hole, picks up a yard. Clemson defense coming into this game, 11th in the country on, in rushing defense, giving up just over 83 yards. Peter Woods. That's one of the true freshmen. Are you kidding me? Did you see 11 running off the field? <laughs> the true freshman, that means he's what, like 19 years old, max? 6'2", 315. Second down and nine. Wake is going to call a timeout charge, to talk timeout. things over. First time out of the half. Hard. Sherry Burris on the field. What do you got for us, Sherry? Well, guys, it was this week offensive coordinator Warren Ruggiero telling us that running back Claiborne is just a super talented kid that has a gift with the ball in his hands. And, Mark, you kind of talked about it. He is extremely fast in both long speed and short acceleration. And that combo is really what makes him so special. And what's crazy, guys, he's just a freshman. So Coach telling us he's just scratching the surface. But as we're seeing, he is getting more used to these live action plays, and that's the best way for him to keep learning. But, man, when he's right, he's right. Coach, uh, Coach hold us, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, he is. And, you know, Mark, you think about over the years that we've called Coach Clawson's team, he always has a stable of backs. It's not one guy. It's not a bell cow. It's two, sometimes three backs. We haven't seen Ellison since the first drive. It's been all Claiborne. He's happy to go with the happy hand, uh, the, the, the hot hand right now. Yeah, and you're... you're they develop backs too, right? They get guys who they think can be talented and then really teach them how to run the football and have patience. And they don't usually play guys as young as Claiborne, but he's just that type of talent. They can't keep him off the field. Picks up another yard. It'll bring up third down and long. Tyler Davis engulfing Claiborne after a short pickup. And again, at third and eight, they can't pick up a first down, but we've seen Clemson pin their ears back. 
in these third and long situations. And there you see it 0 for 3 on third down so far today. Can Mitch Griffiths and this Demon Deacon offense flip the script? He's got tied in Michael Flug in motion at the top of your screen. He'll look to throw. Pocket collapsing again. Wake Forest finally gets to him. It's Ruka Roro -ro -ro for Clemson. Dropping him for the sack. They put pressure on him all game long, and now they finally drop him. His second sack of the season, and that's defensive front for Clemson. They are phenomenal. And you see a Roro, -ro, he's the picker. He was supposed to pick Tyler Davis's offensive lineman so Davis could be free, but sometimes it's the bounce off. It's the guy who does the picking who can get upfield and get the sack. Really good twist game inside by two guys who are best friends, came in together, and they play complimentary football. Matthew Dennis from 35 yards. Puts it through. Wake Forest takes advantage of field position. Dennis with his 10th field goal of the season. Puts the Deeks up by three early. And yeah, that was that was a combination, right? There's all three phases in that in that part. The defense got to stop. Held Clemson back by their own goal line. Punt return team, Taylor Marin had a nice return back to the 45, and then the offense ran the football effectively. Now, Wake Forest is going to need to be more effective in the pass game. I mean, you're, you're not going to expect to beat Clemson without being able to throw the football. And so that's going to be what Dave Clawson works on with Warren Ruggiero. You know, you gotta, we got to start threatening Clemson's defense down the field to keep loosening up that run game. You got to get Mitch Griffiths rolling, yeah. rolling left, rolling right, get him out of that pocket. You got to get him out of that pocket, and you also have to have some more kind of, you know, not technically hot routes. They're not a ton of hot routes in an RPO type offense, but the awareness of when they're going to blitz a lot of people, right, and hit some of those shorter slant routes to replace that pressure with the football, pick up some extra yards. Tyler Brown allowing this one to bounce into the end zone for the touchback. Time for today's Aflac trivia question. Somebody plug in that Ducks mic. I know. Clemson has beaten Wake Forest in 14 straight games. What's the Tigers' longest win streak against an FBS opponent? So I'm going to guess it's uh, against another ACC team. Yep. So they would have had sense. to play a number of games against each other. And, and Wake Forest is... You know, an ACC team that's been in the ACC for a long time. They're right. not one of the newcomers. Well, so. And it's not Wake Forest. So oh, yeah, who is right. it? I mean, Clemson, yeah. It's probably, it's not going to be a North Carolina or NC State or Maryland team. That have, probably like a Duke or Virginia. That's, you're, you're probably right on. I mean, Virginia's been really one of the top programs in the ACC, but you got to go back. That only started happening in the late 80s yeah. when Coach Welsh was there. Before that, I'm going to guess Virginia. We'll see. Let's see what Clemson can do here offensively. They haven't done much all game long. As our clock is winding to two minutes in this first quarter, we haven't seen any type of sustained drive at all from the Tigers. As Klubnik finds his receiver on the far side, five yards. Tyler Brown again. Physical, physical run after the catch by Tyler Brown. Tyler Brown getting a lot of playing time with Antonio Williams' injury. He's missed the last couple of games. We, he's a, he was a game-time decision today. We haven't seen zero in orange, but we're going to see a lot of six over the years for the Clemson Tigers. Third down and three. Klubnik again to throw. Outside finds Brown, and he's close. I think he got there. Now they're going to not really wasn't down. Brown stayed on his feet. Picked up 28 yards on the play when it looked like he might just pick up three. This kid's come out every week for the past three weeks and set new career highs in receptions and receiving yards, and it's because of plays like this. Let's see. That right, that left elbow looks like it might have touched the ground. And they're going to look at it. Yeah, Clemson really tried to get it snapped quickly. Not quickly enough. The ruling on the field, the runner was not down. The previous play is under further review. They let it go, and credit to this officiating crew, Mark. This is the third time that they've let a play go. Yep. Now we'll review it and make sure we make the right call. Yeah, and any part of the body that touches the ground besides, like, your hand would be considered down. 
So let's see if that left elbow, that's going to be a tough angle. That left knee is another possibility. Great presence of mind by Brown to keep going. Let the replay decide it. That, that elbow. elbow is down. Yep, that elbow is down. And it looks like that left knee might be down as well. That should be coming back. That's, somebody needs to tell Tyler Brown he needs to wear a, a, a green arm sleeve. That's the same color as the field instead of that pink arm sleeve. Yep. I'll totally see that against the green background. Good point. Or he needs to make sure he does that right at the 20-yard line. That's encompassed by pink lines. You're right. After further review, the runner's, the runner's knee was down, and the ball was at the 35-yard line. First down, the line of game was made. So knee and elbow down for Tyler Brown, but Tyler Brown is showing us his worth in this offense here early. Klubnik is looking his way a lot. And how about that, right? You, you talk about this guy, Tyler Brown, and he wasn't even set to come here, right? They had already had another slot player committed to them, and he had committed elsewhere. And then... Their slot player who's committed there decided he wanted to go somewhere else. Tyler Brown, he said, okay, maybe I get a shot at Clemson, being from right down the street in Greenville. And they said, cool, come on. This is what he's been doing for the team. Pretty good. Off out of the backfield. Makes a move to pick up close to the first down yard and see where they spot him. I think he's going to be a yard shy. First chance to see Phil Maffa today he and will shipley have been one heck of a one-two combo and clemson wants to go quickly here on second down the pitch to moffa if he got there he just barely got there yeah really good job by the defensive end number five kendra and on the field as the flags and the goal posts are kind of swirling around a little bit but that's something to keep an eye on as the day progresses moffa up the middle there you can see the different styles between Moffa, Clemson, and Claiborne for Wake Forest. Moffa's 230 pounds of brute power. Yeah, he is. He, he is a big boy, but he can break out and run. We saw him have some nice breakaway runs in the open field. He's got some speed to go along with that power. Now the fake to Moffa. Outside, the receiver makes the first man miss, and Stellano is able to pick up about, about three yards. Yeah, tackled by Nick Anderson, and you know, we remember Nick Anderson back from 2020, where a former walk-on kind of was thrown into a game and had three <laughs> interceptions in a game, and he's back after being injured all last year. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that is an that interesting stat. That's not something you see very often for Clemson, and not on this field. Club to throw it. Has a receiver wide open. That's Bo Collins. Big receiver, hard to bring down. Anderson on the tackle, but not before Collins picks up another first down. Get him going, right? Get Bo Collins going on the outside. Big 6'3", 210-pound wide receiver. We've already seen what Tyler Brown can do from the slot, but it gives the Wake Forest defense more things to worry about, right? You're already worried about the threat, but when you start feeding the ball towards the outside, it can open up some of those underneath routes for the tight end, Burning Stool, and also for Tyler Brown. Klubnik again to throw. He's five for five on this drive, make it six for six. You mentioned Burning Stool. It's the big tight end over the middle. He's right at the line to gain. It'll be nine yards. Roberts on the tackle, but Klubnik's into a rhythm right now. He is. Burning Stool is a large person. We saw him pregame on the field. 6'6", 230 pounds. He's all of 6'6", as well. Really a mismatch with his length over the middle. Does a good job of using his body to separate from defenders. He's in the slot. Now you got Moffa split wide right. Klubnik on a design run. Lots of room. Gets down to the 20. Flag comes in. Let's check the marker before they move the sticks. Holding. Offense. Number 55. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Harris Sewell, the freshman from Odessa, Texas. Guilty of the hold. Right there on Justin Williams. Second down and nine. Klubnik rolls left. Looking to go the other way. Almost intercepted and probably should have been intercepted. That looked like... Kendron Lehman. Yeah. Defensive end. And that's a 
That's a classic fire zone pressure, right? You bring a little blitz, but you drop the defensive end out in the flat. That's why it wasn't intercepted. And right again, that was a poor decision by Cade Club. You roll out to your left, you throw all the way across field, only about 10 yards downfield. Lucky that wasn't intercepted. Let's see if he can write it here on third and nine. He's got him off in the backfield with him. Has all kinds of time. Now he's being pressured. Avoids the pressure. Still on his feet as he rolls to his left. He's got room to run and he's got Stellato blocking for him. Lowers his shoulder into the defender. Kalen Carson met him at about the 30 yard line. It won't be anywhere near the yard marker to gain. And now with the wind, it's a decision for Dabo. With He'd the wind. Into the wind. And also, they have not been the best in, turn, in the kicking department so far this year. Kate Klubnik making something out of nothing. It was really good coverage on the back end as Wake Forest only brought four. Looks like they're going to go for it here, keeping the offense on the field at the 30. It's fourth and five. Collins in motion. Wake brings pressure. Picked up initially. Got Collins at the 20. That'll move the sticks. Confidence in your wide receiver to bring down the football. Got a one on one with the blitz. Pretty well thrown football, but even better adjustment and strong hands as Jones was trying to rip that ball out. Huge pickup on fourth down. 14th play of this drive. The first sustained drive Clemson has had all afternoon long. Clubnick again to throw. Again with time. Again over the middle. Collins just putting that big body out there. He's 6'3, 210 pounds, and letting Klubnik find him. Deshaun Jones, he, he's no slouch either. He's six foot, about 181. Moffa. Muscles his way for three. Dylan Hazen on the stop. For the Deeks. I feel like this part of the field is going to be torn up, Chris. I feel like the entire game has been played <laughs> between that 20 yard yeah. line and the end zone. And it has been a big time battle at the line of scrimmage when they've been down there. Yeah, and you see the shadowy parts and the light parts of the end zone. I mean, that, that plays with wide receivers' vision, too. It's, you're in the shadows, and then the ball is in the shadows, and then it's in the light. Let's see if that has any effect on these well, next Well, keeps it. He'll run it easily. Touchdown, Clemson. There you go. Well, what a drive by Cade Klubnik. You mentioned it. Extended drive. Multiple plays, multiple first downs. And got lucky on that one dropped interception, but then turned it around, found the end zone with the legs. I mean, you're watching it live, a maturation process of a young quarterback. Good timeout by Klubnik. Whites with the PAT. Splits the uprights. <laughs> Runs it in himself. Yeah, don't, the Tigers are don't first forget that there. fourth down conversion, right? That was a big, big pass by Club Nick. And let's see if that can build some confidence for that passing game to continue to open up for him. Into the wind. Gunn sends it out of the back of the end zone. Big forest ball. We'll touch back. Time to answer our half-lag trivia question. Clemson has beaten Wake Forest 14 straight games. What's the Tigers' longest win streak against an FBS opponent? The answer is Virginia. I mean, 29. That seven. is so many in a row. I thought it had to be an old school ACC matchup. And George Welsh, of course, got Virginia, took them to national prominence in the late 80s. And you saw that streak ended in 1989. Griffiths dropped. Check out some of the other schools that Clemson has smashed. 
South Carolina topped that list, much to the chagrin of Brian Van Etter. It's pretty much statistician. It's pretty much whoever they play the most. <laughs> I mean, they've, they have been over the years, over the long haul, the dominant team in the ACC. I mean, yep. There have been stretches where North Carolina has been great and Georgia Tech has been great. Even this Wake Forest team's had some stretches here under Coach Clawson and Coach Grove beforehand. But through the years, it has been Clemson. Yeah, it has. Yeah, I think some people will look at the three and two record this year and be like, oh man, it's a dip off. But look at 35 and four all time against teams from North Carolina. Yeah, but I think Dabo has so much confidence in his team, and he I mean he really thinks this is a phenomenal team. Here they come. Banks Good makes catch. a catch. That's gonna be a first down. I mean, how does Mitch Griffiths throw that football? I mean, he is the entire offensive line in his lap. He's got hands up by the defense. I mean, watch this. Look, I mean. Yeah, he's got guys right there and just a good job of trusting his wide receiver to make a play for him and pick up the first down. First third down conversion of the day for the Deeks. Carney trying to find a little crease. Did well to pick up three. Tyler Davis on the tackle. We talk about the defensive front and Dabo Sweeney said he thinks that he right now on this roster he has 12 guys in the defensive line room that are going to go play in the NFL when he told us that earlier this week I was like <laughs> wait a minute you mean like on the whole defense no the defensive front Griffith steps up now he's going to throw it that's dangerous as there maybe there was a little miscommunication that time between he and Banks Banks was running a fly route yeah but no it was it's, watch where he throws the football like this is he steps up so far in the pocket. Oh, he gets hit. Yeah, that Tate Carney, all the, all the defender has to do is just bump him back a few feet, and he's bumping the quarterback. I mean, that's that's a part of this offense, but it can also be something the defense exploits. And look at here. Another. I mean, they are presenting zero pressure. There is no middle safety in the back of the field because Andrew Makuba has the tight end to cover. Here they come. Nothing. Wow, Nowhere to go. No. That is an orange wave in the backfield, Mark. And I mean, it just goes to show how threatening the defensive front is. That is a pass read 100% of the time when you have every gap filled with defensive players and just not really a chance on that third down. Tyler Brown standing on his 12th. Moore will kick. With the wind that is back, end over end. Brown lets it bounce, and that was not a good decision. Now he's in trouble. Picks it up at his own three and goes down right there. Keyshawn Williams made the tackle, and Clemson will once again start this drive from deep in their own territory. Up 7 3. Been a magical run continued by this Dabo team. Sherry's down in the field. Head coach Dabo Sweeney told us guys that Kate Kluvnik's ability to run is one of the biggest areas of growth in these first five games. He scored the only touchdown so far using his legs. And one of the reasons coach told us is because he is just so fast. And Sweeney said he might be the mold of NFL QBs to Sean Watson and Trevor Lawrence. We just saw him there. Mark, you can attest how frustrating it is for a defense when they think they have a guy. Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime, anytime you feel like you lock up the receivers and you're trying to even send pressure, get to the quarterback, and he just breaks contain or finds that rush, I mean, that that's tough, right? And you have to game plan differently for that ability. And you know, that's really the, that's, that's the mold, right? That's the gold standard now for collegiate quarterbacks. You can't just be a pocket passer anymore. You have to be a threat with your legs. Shipley sidesteps the first tackler, gets out to about the nine. It'll bring up a big third down for this Wake Forest defense. They get off the field on a three and out and get great field position back to their offense. It's going to be a win for them as we reach and go beyond the halfway point of the second quarter. Yeah, for sure. And I've been really impressed with the way Wake Forest and Brad Lambert's defense have been tackling. They put a big stress in their bye week on tackle the football, no extra yards. They have not missed many tackles in this game and had they have not given up many big plays. They bring just three. Shipley was out of the backfield, and they try and connect with him. And it doesn't work out. Caleb Carson on coverage for Wake Forest. And Mark, they do just that. Three and out. They'll get the ball back close to midfield. 
Yeah, Brett Lambert was brought in last year as defensive coordinator for Wake Forest. And you know, he had a previous stint at Wake Forest in that 08 range when they you know, were, were very good in the ACC back that first time. And it's really a multiple defense. They'll have linebackers walk around, they'll send pressure, and that time, really good multiple coverage on the back end. Cover two on the back side, cover four on the front side, and confused Klubnik. He was able to force an air throw. High kick, but not very deep. Morin comes up to make the fair catch at his own 42. Outstanding field position for the Deacons when we come back. They trail 7-3 here in Death Valley in the second quarter. That is far from a fait accompli right now because Clemson is getting all they can handle from Wake Forest. You see the average starting field position on each drive. Wake Forest is a great field position. And Clemson has had terrible field position to start their drives. Pressure and flags and whistles. We're gonna have to wait for Jerry Magalanis on this one. I'm not sure who jumped and who or who draws who drew somebody offside. It almost looked like Clemson moved. That's first. Coach Clawson thinks this is point five yards in that direction. Full start, offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, first down. Coach Clawson didn't get his wish. Well, they called yeah. it on, say, on 74, yeah. the center, right? Yeah, and unless he made some sort of movement with the football, which could be possible, couldn't tell from that angle. If you twist the football or kind of simulate that snap move, they will call that on the center. But obviously, you saw 55 with the jump. Claiborne gets it outside. Still on his feet. Picks up about six. Kuba on the tackle. Good job of gaining half of it back. And second down, you're back to kind of normal down and distance here. Griffiths to throw. Clemson brings just four. It's a receiver underneath. Fumbles a football oh, picked up by Clemson. And Mickens is finally brought down, but R.J. Mickens picks up the fumble. And I don't think they're going to review this one, Mark. No, oh, that would look pretty clear. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Clemson. And a violent tackle. It's number eight, Wesley Grimes, in the middle. And you see a strong, strong tackle by Khalil Barnes, the true freshman nickelback. And it does look like that ball's out as he spins him around before the rear end touches the ground and heads up play by Minkins to pick it up. Carney with a pat on the back for Grimes. Grimes doesn't want to hear any of it right now. First turnover of the game forced by Clemson. <laughs> it happened all week. These coaches in their press conferences, when they're talking to us, all they talked about was like, ah, stats don't matter, except, except one stat, turnover margin. That's the one that matters. And as it so often tells the story. Yeah, and Clawson, right, we're talking to him about it, he was disgusted. He goes, we, we're loose with the football. It's like we don't care when we're holding the football. He's not going to be pleased with that. Well, finally, some decent field position for Clemson. Klubnik, again, a design run. He's got blockers in front of him. Slides down at the 44. They'll mark him at the 43. Gain of five. He's their leading rusher today, and that's not saying a whole lot. No, you, you talk about... 15 yards. Yeah, talking about yards. Clemson's ability to stop the run. Wake Forest defense has only given up 28 yards in this first half so far. This time he'll give it to Shipley. He brought down shy of the first down marker, only three yards. Wayman on the stop. So another third down. The more th 
third downs you force defensively, the harder it is to move the ball. It doesn't matter if it's third and two or third and three. It just get them to third down. And that's what Wake Forest has done. And all you need is, you know, is one play. One play on third down now to try to get the ball back to your offense. Shipley shifts out to wide receiver, empty backfield. Loving it quickly at Bo Collins. Inside of Wake Forest territory, first down. Really good blocking on the outside. Clemson's wide receivers. And Troy Stiletto does a great job of securing their blocks and giving Collins enough room to pick up that first. And they move Shipley around. Now he's split to the bottom of your screen. Again, empty backfield for Klubnik. Now Shipley in motion. Klubnik fakes it to him, trying to go downfield. Doesn't have a receiver, but he can run. He's able to pick up what he can, and that's going to amount to four. Jasheen Davis on the stop. And it looked like they were trying to do a double move, kind of a smoke screen to the top side of the field. And just a good job. Look at the cornerbacks always staying on top of their receivers. No one open. And that that comes with good tackling. When you have confidence in the guys in front of you making the tackles, you don't have to release off your coverage. Good job by Wake Forest defense. Fake to Shipley. Good catch by Brown. Now they're going to say he dropped it. Better coverage. Evan Slocum on the coverage for Wake Forest. Yeah, and there's been a lot of talk this week by Brad Lambert around that nickel position. They understand, look, we're having Tyler Brown come into this game. We need big games from Evan Slocum and Nick Anderson. That was a big play by Slocum, and he has one interception on the season so far. Big challenge for these linebackers and safeties over the middle of the field against these talented tight ends and slot receivers for Clemson. Third down and six. Club Nick to throw. Collins can't make the catch. There really wasn't much room for him regardless, even if he did catch it. All right, there's another third down. Wake Forest gets him into a third down position, and all it is just a drop, right? And you know, does he pick up the first if he catches it? Who knows? But they made that play when they needed to, and now they're going to get the ball back. The punt fest continues here in Death Valley. It's don't you feel like Dabo would love to fake one right here? I don't know. <laughs> Wake Forest has their defense on the field still, just in case. Swanson's going to try and pin him deep. End over end punt. Horn is just going to let it sail over his head. Checks back, though, so it's decent. Could have been great. Clemson marks it down at the 15 after just a 27-yard punt. Oop. See what Wake Forest can do here with 3.04 left to go in the first half. Claiborne, nowhere to run, but he still picks up two. Barrett Carter on the tackle. And this is interesting here. It's something I advocate a lot, and I, I rarely get rewarded for it. Call your timeouts early on defense. Yeah. Get, you, you can run, you can control the clock on offense. If you think you can get the ball back and make something happen, call the timeouts early. And then you have control of the clock as opposed to the other way around. Yeah, I think a lot of that has comes with confidence in your defense, right? If you start using your timeouts when you're like, ah, you know, we're probably going to give up a first down, then it's a waste. But both these teams should have tons of confidence in their defenses. And, you know, we were talking to the break, Chris, and this reminds it's kind of like an NFL-type game. You, know, you look at the score and, oh, it's, you know, 7-3, to three, not a lot of action, but you've seen a lot of really good play by the defense. A field position type game, you know, a couple big stops around the goal line, and you know, you have yourself right in the middle of something that is going to get really fun and really exciting. And so, you know, 7 3 low scoring game in this first half, but it's been because the defense has executed really well for both teams. Yeah, you told me during the half, it's kind of like a, or during the break, it's kind of like a. Griffiths goes down again. He keeps, you know, that pocket is so shallow, and he steps up into it. Yeah. He's stepping up into the charging defense. It, it's so much is put on the center and guards, right? Because 
you have to reestablish the line of scrimmage. When the quarterback is throwing the football from one and a half yards behind the initial spot of the ball, you have to be stout in the middle. I mean, you just can't get pushed back. And Mitch Griffiths, again, like again, tries to step up and just has to has to eat the football. Kind of finish my thought. You yeah. know, we, we were talking about how this is a very much like an NFL game. Yeah. Like a chess match, not a lot of big plays. Yeah, and it's short tackling, right? You so often you see the big plays in college football because teams just aren't tackling them, or they're letting wide receivers run free behind them. Both these teams. You know, hey, we gave up a five-yard crossing route. Fine, we made the tackle. But we haven't given up the 20, 30-yard, 60-yard touchdowns. And that, you know, they're making these offense work. And I think it's been a good game plan by both defenses. And now, you know, before half, you try to do something. But at halftime, these offensive coordinators are going to have to find their thing and stick to it in the second half. Third down and nine coming out of the timeout. Clemson once, once again showing pressure. And they come with it. Claiborne stays on his feet. Did well to pick up about five yards, but it'll bring up fourth down. Clemson looks like they're going to save that last time out. Something's going on, on that sideline. Dave Clawson needed to speak about something. Wanted some wanted clarification. Yeah, wanted clarification. I think he was probably set telling the punt team, hey, take your time. Let the clock go down to about eight seconds before you call for the snap here. And snapping operations are a little different in punt. There's a lot less of cadence and more of a clap or sort of signal by the up back. There it is. Laura will have the wind in his back if he gets it up high enough to get into that jet stream, and he does. That's a good kick. Brown fumbles the ball. And that's a big mistake oh, by the man. freshman. Wake Forest comes up with the big turnover inside of two minutes left in this first half. Jalen Garns is able to pick up the loose ball, and the Deeks are in business. Wow. Well, last time out, it was Wake Forest. And Taylor Marin Rolling against Georgia field. Tech, who the bumped, bumped the ball. By the receiving team, this time, by the kicking team. this First time down, it was Forest. Tyler Brown, and got lost in the sun. You see, the, where the shadows are, that sun was right in his eyes. And great coverage getting down the field. It was Chalen Garns, the safety who recovered that one. There you see Dabo. Encouraging his freshman return man. Fourth drive of the day for Wake Forest to start inside of Clemson territory. Claiborne picks up seven. At the pace at which Wake Forest runs their normal offense, they just got to stick to their normal cadence, their normal routine. Up to the line of scrimmage, get the play call, read the defense, and go. Stolen this Clemson defense. Claiborne cuts it up inside. Shy of the first down marker to gain. He's got to get almost to the 20. No, he's not. He made it. He gave him the mark. So first down, fresh set of downs for Wake Forest. This has been the sticking point for Wake Forest offensively. They've gotten down into the red zone multiple times. Unable to find the end zone they need that before half here Tigers showing pressure they bring it up the middle Griffiths has one on one on the edge trying to get it to Banks incomplete the end zone boy there was a lot of contact on the back Lucas end on coverage let's take another look at this watch the top of the screen just a go route and just a lot of holding and tugging that to me looked like pretty clear pass interference wow. of Banks, and I can tell you what. From a defensive guy, that's or, or, I, I thought there was clutching on both sides. And, you know, and if a linebacker over here telling me that was clear PI. It to me it looked like it, and Clemson looked like they got away with one. Second and ten. Claiborne. Nice hit. Down at the twenty. Wow. 
Toriano Pride Jr. Another big play from the sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri. When your corners can come up and tackle like this, you are in business. Third down and nine. Claiborne. Going to get dropped for a loss. Just nowhere to go. Barrett Carter again in the backfield. And really interesting, right? Really interesting play call on third down. Knowing that, okay, we're in field goal range and we do we trust our quarterback to make the right decision? And I think the answer there was no. Well, Coach Clawson calls one of his two final timeouts. He'll send Matthew Dennis out there to attempt the field goal. He's got the wind at his back, and he's got plenty of leg. You think about the three points Wake Forest put on the board earlier in this half off a turnover. They weren't able to convert in terms of six. And that was after they gave up the ball back on downs after a turnover, right? And now yep. you get a turnover here, and you're able to pick up one first down, but Dennis is going to come out and attempt the field goal. Here's the other part of that. I guess you're really happy with your defense and the job they've done. Oh. And you think in the second half, you're saying, okay, this is going to be a tight, low-scoring game throughout. I'm not going to have to keep up with Clemson in terms of scoring. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that's – look, there's a lot of things that go into this coaching deal, and, and Dave Clawson has seen all of them. Hey, he really has. And so, you know, this is you, – you, you finish this, this half down one – to Clemson with a lot of confidence in your defense, some confidence in your run game, and then they, on the flip side, really good stand by Clemson's defense, kind of doing what they've been doing all year. 39-yard attempt from Dennis. Good snap, good hold, Dennis. No. Leaks it wide left. No good. Missed all day long, and turnovers have been premium. But I guess the big story is Wake Forest has had opportunities off of turnovers, and they haven't been able to really make much out of it. And so Clemson has the 7-3 lead as we kick off here to start the third quarter. Sherry Burris on the field with more. Austin told me he needs his team to finish in the red zone. He pointed out two missed opportunities just in that first half that really seemed to bother him. He said, especially against Clemson, you can't make those mistakes. But to his defense, he is proud of the way they are playing, holding Clemson to only 124 yards of total offense. Now here in the second half, Coach Clawson said he wants explosive plays, particularly cashing in in the red zone because, guys, they left at least nine points on the board in that first half. Yeah, no question about it, Sherry. Have not been able to take advantage of the, the opportunities they've been given, and they're not going to be guaranteed those opportunities here in the second half as Shipley gets into the open clear. Picks up a first down. Mustafa had to make the tackle, but not before Shipley was able to pick up 21 yards on the first carry of the second half. That's the longest run by far for Clemson in this game. Yeah, they caught the defensive line in a stunt game, and really good job finding the hole by Shipley. Here he goes again. He's oh, oh, a defender. Oh, baby. Into Wake Forest territory. That was Garns. He tried to jump over an additional 12 yards. Well, Klubnik was the leading rusher for this Wake Forest team in that first half with 20 yards, but Shipley has soared over that total with just these last two runs. Again with Shipley. Trying to find a lane to run. This time shut down. He'll lose a yard. Yeah, Shipley back-to-back -back big runs. A good job. You see the, the pullers coming from the backside, able to get up on the linebackers. And there goes Shipley. Tries to go up and over top of Jalen Garns, and Garns dumped him. That loss of a yard on that last run slowed things down a bit for this Clemson offense that looked like they wanted to go at lightning speed to start this second half. Now Klubnik to throw. Goes to his progression. Receiver fell down, but he was still able to hit the tight end. Brinningstool. Gain of about eight on the play. It'll bring up third down and two. And you got to think this is four down territory here, Mark, regardless of where they are on the field and having to kick into the wind. Dabo would like to pick it up on this down, though, and not have to worry about it. You got Brinning Stool number nine right there on the hash. He's going to be working on a safety. 
Love Nick to throw. Collins makes the catch. That'll move the sticks. Deshaun Jones on coverage, but Bo Collins using that big frame to go up and snatch it out of the air. Yeah, another really good job of Bo Collins and his strong hands. It's a really good break on the football by Deshaun Jones. It just really strong hands catching the ball away from his body. And Bo Collins picks up another first down. They'll split Shipley up to the top of your screen. Klubnik to throw. Wake brings just four. The pressure's picked up. Klubnik's going to try and run for him straight up the middle. And picks up a good seven yards before Hazen is able to bring him down. You can tell there were some, some words in the locker room to this offense. Hey, we need to pick it up. Pick up our pace, pick up our execution. They've done that to start this third quarter. Shipley. Back inside, stays on his feet inside the 15. It'll be first and 10. Oh, and Shipley. You He's running with a purpose here, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, and he's talking and Yo, who do you go to for the spark? You got a young quarterback. Okay, let's go to Will Shipley, right? He's in this game this entire drive. Let's hand him the football. He has provided that spark in, in the past for this Clemson offense, and on this drive, it's been him. He alone running the ball in this drive has doubled. Clemson's rushing output in that entire first half here just trying to move the pile does so to the tune of about four yards Wake Forest defense has been phenomenal in the red zone so far this season forcing teams to prove that they deserve to be in the end zone and again right nothing has come easy on this drive for Clemson, but they've been executing at a high level. 44 yards on five carries on this drive alone for Shipley. Now Klubnik to throw. Brittany Stool lowers his shoulder. Nice job on the tackle that time by Mustafa. And that, that's what we're talking about, right? It's, yo, know, any, <laughs> I've watched games where that is a touchdown automatically, right? You have a big, Tight end, you have a safety coming over top, it's gonna overrun the play. Great job by Malik Mustafa. Third down and one, Shipley on the carry. That's gonna be close. He got inside the five. I'm not sure he made it though. That's gonna be no, fourth down. Fourth down, again, making him work for every yard down in the red zone. And they look like they're gonna go for it. Bringing in their second tight end, Sage Ennis, who's more of a Blocking, lead blocking, tight end like a fullback. Well, here it is. Now Klubnik looks to the sideline. Timeout, Clemson. Dabo ran all the way down to the five-yard line to find the line judge. And Make that timeout call. He'll talk things over with his staff and his players. Clemson on an early second half drive, fourth and one, when we come back. Greatness is. One, Shipley, there you see his numbers in the first half, basically nothing. He put this team on his back on this drive, but they got to finish it here, Mark. Yeah, and they, you know, Clemson coming into this game only three for nine on fourth downs, one for one today. Klubnik under center, hands it to Shipley, takes contact and falls forward. That'll be first and goal for the Tigers. Yeah, and he got it. Why not go back to Shipley? He's gotten you here. Let's go back to him. And running behind that big right side. Yeah, and look who's in there. It's Ruka Rororo and Tyler Davis. <laughs> look at 33 and 13, right on the right side. And those big boys are staying in the football game. Here, look at them. Those are two D tackles. Whole lot of muscle on the right side, but nice. Wake Forest Tackle. beats him with speed and quickness. Hazen knifing in to make the tackle in a two yard loss. What a play by Dylan Hazen. It was the exact same play offensively. Just a power game with double teams up front with lead blockers. 
And now they've pulled their two defensive tackles and an extra tight end off the field back to their normal 11 personnel on offense. And Davis was limping off the field a little bit after that play. I got stuck under the pile. Second down and goal. Love Nick to throw, but flags down. Yeah. Be a false start. Snap infraction. Offense. Offense. Number 56. Five yard penalty. Second down. And after picking up the first down, Clemson's going the wrong way. It'll be second and goal from the eight. Second and goal. They'll mark it at the eight yard line. Wake Forest has bowed up down near this goal line. It's been this goal line. It's been this left side of the field the whole game. Yeah, Wake Forest coming in seventh in the country in red zone defense. Club Nick to throw. Collins, did he high point it? Out of bounds, incomplete. Just wasn't able to get a foot in. As intended from Oak Collins. And that was exactly where K Club Nick needed to throw the ball. You Defensive end again dropped out underneath it and really close. Didn't come down with the football either, but now, now it's third down. Third and goal from the eight yard line. And this is your shot. You gotta, I mean, you gotta pull out your best play. Club Nick to throw. Wake Forest brings pressure up the middle. Club Nick. Clubnik forced out of the pocket. He's rolling to his left. Trying to get it on his own. Throws it away before he got to the line of scrimmage. And they're going to call that an incomplete pass. Was able to save a couple of yards, but it's academic because White's is going to come out to attempt the field goal. And what a stand by Brad Lambert's defense. And how about Kevin Pointer? The defensive tackle. Watch on the scramble. They send pressure. And then 91. Watch 91 take the proper angle. You're not faster than Kate Klubnik, but if you take the right angle and you hustle hard, you get in the right position. What a stand from the one yard line for Wake Forest defense. Jonathan Weitz will attempt a 25 yard field goal. Two for four on the season. He's taken over for the injured Robert Gunn. Clay Sweeney on the hold, Holden Casperson on the snap. Executed well, and Whites sneaks that one inside the left upright. Tigers take the opening kickoff here in the second half, drive the length of the field. They can't find Pater, though, but Whites splits the uprights. They're up seven. Geico makes car insurance as easy as loving Parmesan. Say when. 10-3 Clemson on top here in the third. Coming up tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern, number 18 Miami hosts the Institute down in South Florida. You can watch it here on the ACC Network as well as on the ESPN app. So you can check it out anywhere your travels take you on this Saturday afternoon. Tigers got three on that possession. We're able to utilize Will Shipley running the football a lot better than they had any, at any time in that first half. So that's going to bode well for him, but as much as that bodes well for the Tigers, it's, it's Wake again who does it in the red zone and keeps him out of the end zone. Yeah, and you, right, you get points, and yeah, you got some good yardage by Will Shipley, but that's not what Clemson wants to do, right? They don't want to get down and settle for a field goal. You know, especially, right, you talk about the middle eight, right? Dabo Sweeney is big on that middle eight. The last four minutes of the first half, the first four minutes of the second half. And that would have been, that would have been a big play, right? You get a touchdown here, now it's a 14 to three game. Wake Forest is gonna have to press a little bit, force the ball downfield. But now all of a sudden it's just, hey, let's just normal operation. We go and we score a touchdown, it's tie game. Gunn's got a big leg. Sends this one into the end zone, even into the wind. Touchback for Wake Forest. Take a look at the league and where it shapes up. Big, kind of under the radar, maybe a little bit. Louisville and Notre Dame today. I think you know, there are a lot yeah. of big games people are talking about. And oh, for sure. That's I mean, not one a lot of people are talking about, but maybe they should be. Well, they should. I mean, 
if you haven't seen Louisville play yet this year, right, then they deserve to be ranked in the top 25. They are, they're an explosive, dynamic offense that, you know, is a big home run hitter all the time. And, you know, there's some questions around how well Notre Dame's going to be able to bounce back after, you know, they had a big game versus Duke with a lot of guys getting, you know, it was a physical game, let's just say that. Griffiths. Pulls it down. It's great yards on first down, 11. Let's move the sticks. Trotter and Carter combining on the tackle. It's been Wake Forest's best play offensively. Him keeping it, not throwing it from that position. Yeah, correct. Clemson brings just four underneath the banks. Brought down at the 44, gain of eight. That's fine, right? It's not the big play pass, but it's fine, right? It's, it's a first down play. Let's hit the hitch route. Make sure this defensive line starts getting frustrated. They can't get to us every single time. I like that play call. Playboy. Patience. Wait for a hole to open up. It doesn't open up very wide, but it's wide enough for him to get a first down. Yeah. Gosh, you know, I was wondering if he was going to come up hobbled at all. A little bit there. Came down funny right at the end. And I don't know if I'd call it run play to him. Fresh set of downs near midfield for Griffiths. He's going to throw. Pressure on the edge, but he gets rid of it. Four yards on the pitch and catch. Thomas hit Griffiths coming off the edge. Sean Williams made the catch, clock winding. Five and a half left to play in this third quarter. That first Clemson drive took a lot of time off the clock. Only got three points out of it, though. Now Wake is driving. Griffiths. And now he's going to throw it. It's Williams to the 35 first down. Yeah, and that was, that's, that was executed properly, right? There was a good pocket up in front. And you're able to hit the little shallow route. And the reason why that's open is because when Mitch Griffiths does step up, it looks like he's running a quarterback draw. And the linebackers have to respect that. And so it vacates that zone right behind the linebackers. Good connection. Griffiths is going to go for Banks. Inside the 10. Covered nicely by Pride. And Toriano Pride's been a really good game from that corner spot. Yeah, he, he sure has. Good job getting his head back around, getting that arm up. And... Again, only a true sophomore. They have so many young guys that have made a huge difference on this defense. Second down and 10. Wake Forest brings in Tate Carney now from the tailback spot. Griffiths to throw. He's looking that way. Now he's chased out of the pocket. Hits Banks. Hit immediately by Pride. There's going to be no gain on the play. We haven't seen Justice Ellison since the first drive of this game for Wake Forest. I don't know whether he's banged up or not. Claiborne's been impressive, but now with Claiborne hobbled a bit, we're going to see more Tate Carney looks 30 and white. You're exactly right. You'd think that you would see a little more Justice Ellison, but here we go. Big third down and long here. Let's see what type of pressure Clemson dials up. They're bringing it right up the middle. Griffiths runs out of time and has to throw it. Couldn't get anything on it as Jeremiah Trotter got him. And now a flag comes out. Oh, that was such a late flag. We're going to see the replay to see if I agree with it or not. Because that really doesn't matter. But Personal foul. Roughing the passer defense. Number 54. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. The crowd oh, here apoplectic at that call. Yeah, it looks like he said that hurt. Watch this. Oh, that opened up beautifully. And I don't know, unless he drives him into the ground, which it's, you know what? I, I don't agree. I don't agree at all with that call, but, and neither does this crowd, as you can tell. But look, Trotter doesn't care. He's like, all right, let's just stop him again. Yeah, agree or not, it's first and ten for Wake Forest, and this drive continues. 
Long mesh. Griffiths to throw. Banks inside the 15. Tackled at the 11. Mickens on the tackle. Banks getting much more involved here on this drive than we've seen from him in the game. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just been, it's been the Banks show. Griffiths, he'll run it, gets free. Oh, just a shoestring tackle prevents him from scoring. Trotter making the stop, but still Griffiths picks up seven, and they want to go quickly. They do. Man, that was almost a touchdown. Watch Trotter, 54, jump right there. Nah, nice tackle, saving the touchdown. Wake can get a first down at the one-yard line, so it's second down and three. We've seen Clemson bow up themselves inside the 10-yard line. Can they do it again? Claiborne. Dropped right on the spot at the 5. Rukororo making the stop. There's Justice Ellison, number 6 in white. No helmet in hand. Yeah, no helmet, no gloves. So... He looks like he may be a cheerleader for the rest of the night. Yeah, it still can provide some leadership for his guys out there. They need it here. This Clemson crowd needs to get into this right here. Defense is calling for it. Going into the Howard's Rock end zone here at Death Valley. Third down and three. Griffiths looking to throw pressure up the middle. Forces him from the pocket. Throws to the end zone and just throws it away. A row, row, row again providing the pressure and forcing Griffiths out of the pocket. And once again, we'll see Dennis for a field goal attempt. Yeah, and I don't know if the crowd was booing there. I think they might have given a Rook. A Rook a row, row, row. And what a stop by Clemson, Clemson defensively. And Jeremiah Trotter Jr., after getting flagged for, you know, kind of a, well, no, it was, I didn't like the call at all. It was a bad call. He said, you know what, I, whatever, let's just go play football. Made a touchdown saving tackle. 22 yards on the try for Dennis. He is true. This crowd is really letting the officials hear about it. Dennis puts three more on the board for the Deeks. But a missed opportunity for Wake Forest inside the five. It's 10 6. Clubs it on top. Bowen up inside the red zone, allowing three and not six. So Clemson still with the lead, and we've had two drives throughout this entire third quarter. Two long drives. The crowd still unhappy with that roughing call, but they're going to have to live with it. How about Eric McLean, former Clemson offensive lineman with the huddle crew? Stephen A is going to be with them down in Miami as they get you set for Georgia Tech in Miami. If Clemson gets the W here, Stephen A and Dabo are going to have a little bit of a conversation during the huddle. So you aren't going to want to miss that. I'll tell you what, there were two clips there where McLean had, where was wearing FSU garb. Right. DJ's got one on him. I mean, <laughs> big time. If, McLean, if McLean's wearing the garnet and gold, it's a serious bet lost. But all still to play for in terms of the ACC title. For both Florida State and Clemson. Moffa. Look at the footwork. Still on his feet. Finally tackled at the 46. That is a big man right there. 6'1, 220. Light on his feet, though, Mark. Bread and butter. Will Shipley and Phil Moffa. And these are the broken tackles. In one play, he forced more missed tackles than Wake Forest has had the entire game. Good run. Let's see if Clemson can move quickly and move the ball down the field as they did on their last drive. Another completion. It's the tight end, Sage Ennis. Sage Ennis heard you say he's more of the fullback yeah. in the, on their last drive, so he's got to show off his hands. Six sleeve tattoo, too, though. I always thought if I got a tattoo, I'd have to do a whole sleeve. I wouldn't want to just get like one. No, it's complicated, though. You got to give a lot of direction on what you want. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of space, a lot of surface area. Fake to Moffa, dropped, Brown couldn't handle it. 
Pass had a lot of sauce on it. It'll bring up third down. So as promising as that drive looked to begin with, Wake Forest can still get off the field here with no damage. Thing get a stop here on third down. Yeah, there's just something to making the offense play the next play, right? Okay, Phil Moffa broke seven or eight tackles. Will Shipley broke seven or eight tackles in the last drive, but you tackled him, right? You got him down, and now they have opportunity to get off the field. Clubnick looking to throw, has time. Now he's flushed. Trying to get to the edge. Stays in bounds and picks up the first down. <laughs> that looked eerily similar to the last third down. And Pointer was the given chase again. I know, same play. And, you know, now 91 finds himself in that position and just more field, right? Now it's a little bit more field, and Club Nick said, you know what? Screw it. I'm pulling it down and I'm running. And good job staying in bounds, picking up the first down. And now you get Pointer out of the game, right? Do you go back to the run? Best defensive tackle for Wake Forest just ran 70 yards across the field. Do you go and attack that spot? Final minute of this third quarter, rapidly moving third quarter. Klubnik gets it out to Green. Nice tackle. Nice tackle, Who limiting him to just a one yard gain. Is that Malik again? Yep, Mustafa's been a tackle. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Chris? All right, thank you, Sherry. Clemson 130 and three when leading, in, entering the fourth quarter since 2011. They've got the lead here. Klubnik wanted to get it to Maffa, rolls the pocket, picks up five yards, flag down behind the play. There's no foul for offensive holding. Third down. Pick up the flag. Good job by Wake's defense. On the extended play by Klubnik, it just, you call it technique plaster, right? You find a guy in your zone, you, you man up on him, don't let him get open. And it brings up third down. And this is a crowd right now that they are on their feet with the anticipation, but there has not been much room for hope that this Wake Forest defense has presented on third down so far in this game. Shipley now in motion out of the backfield. It was open initially, and they close it down. Trying to get it to Hamp Green, and Klubnik overshoots him. Ooh, and Klubnik just, you know, kind of staring like I... He thought maybe the route was supposed to be different. Watch 24 in the slot to the bottom of the screen. He just kind of cuts the route off, and you know, that's obviously Klubnik thought he was going to stay vertical. And here the two of them are talking about it on the sideline. Hamp Green, he cut it off and tried to settle down in the zone underneath the safety. Now a long field goal attempt. From White's 51 yards, he's got the wind at his back. Good snap, good hold, the kick is off. It's gonna be wide left. Just tugged it a bit. I mean, this is the epitome of a deep. Wake Forest back with the ball. Griffiths, been under pressure all game long. Forces it out of bounds, incomplete flag down. We've had a lot of flags in this game. Hold it. Offense, number 54, 10-yard penalty, first down. Matt Goldman, the right guard, the redshirt sophomore from Wilton, Connecticut. Take a look, 54. Yeah, right there in the middle. Working on big number 19. Devontae Capehart in the middle, got a good push, got on his edge. First and 20. Wake is showing pressure on the edge. Now Griffiths wants to change things around. Clemson adjusting defensively pre-snap. Carney. Hits him about three. 
Great job by Xavier Thomas. Shedding his block and making that tackle. Second down and 17. Got to be careful not to get too greedy here if you're Wake, right? Yeah, and you know if you do see pressure, which I don't, I don't anticipate pressure here by Clemson. But if you do get pressure, the screen is an available option. They only bring four, but pressure up the middle, so Griffiths is forced out. He can make something happen with his legs, and he does. Picks up about five. It'll bring up third and 12. Wake Forest trying to break a long losing streak in this series. Clemson's won 14 straight in the series. And they've won 11 straight here on this very field, dating all the way back to 1998. Bob West Goodwin, now is the time I bring pressure. You get good coverage on the outside. Don't allow enough time for these receivers to develop their routes downfield. Get in Mitch Griffith's face. Great. Receivers stacked on the left side. Pressure comes, but he gets it away. Can't hook up with Wesley Grimes. And Griffiths again takes a big hit. And he did all he could do, throw it up. And that's when Wesley Grimes needs to understand, hey, look, there's pressure. I got to look back for the ball a little bit sooner. I think if he had, he would have had a chance at that football. But another great, great stop. That's R.J. Mickens on that safety blitz. I don't even want to think about the bruises on Griffith's rib cage after the hits he's taken in this game. Tyler Brown with the fair catch at his own 23 after a 46-yard punt. Wake Forest and Mitch Griffiths hanging in there, down just four here in the fourth. Yeah, there have been none, no points off of turnovers, and you almost rare I mean you almost never see that and, but it's just been a testament to both of these defenses not worrying about where the ball's placed just that hey we have another opportunity to get a stop and they have Shipley good run on first down eight yards Shalen Garns on the tackle Sherry what's going on well, guys, as we see the Clemson offense trying to put more points on the board, down here on the sideline, I saw Dabo Sweeney for the first time all game come sit with his linebackers, some of the defensive guys. He was talking emphatically, using his hands a lot. And this week, he did tell us he just had the unique perspective on things not going the way we want it. So he even told me he's a little disappointed in how they're playing. So see how they pick it up here every year, the final minutes of the fourth quarter. All right, Sherry, we appreciate it. See how this guy gets things going it was number one mark they put it in his hands at the start of the second half when they needed a spark he gave them one driving them the length of the field even though they only got three out of it looks like they that's part of the game plan here in the fourth it is but another third down right just like that after a good run you get stopped for no yardage and it's third down and I mean Clemson has been five of 13 on third down so far today Club Nick to throw. Rennie still drops it. And now it's fourth down. And now it's fourth down. And execution has not been there on third down for Clemson's offense. Like pair that with the, fl the flying defense of Wake Forest. But this is a this is a first down. That would have been a first down if caught. Wanted a flag on Roberts. And they're now really giving it to the officials, too. Man, how devastating could that have been for Wake Forest if they did throw that flag? Lauren from his 21st, 21 yard line, rather, with the fair catch, 48 yards. And the Aiden Swanson punt. You mentioned the winning streak for Clemson. Last time Wake Forest won in this series. Got to go all the way back to October 9th, 2008. To Kobe Ford scored there for Clemson. That was their only touchdown, though. Riley Skinner finds DJ Bolden in the year. It was 12-7 at that point. And a fourth down attempt here by Clemson Foyle. Tommy Bowden head and hands. 12-7 was the final. Jim Grobe and the Deeks celebrating but that was a long time ago little Aaron Curry sighting there right 
Another classic Wake Forest overachiever, huh? Yeah, oh yeah. Got to play with him. I played against him many years. Got to play with him in the NFL towards the end of his career. Great player. Clemson showing pressure up the middle. They bring it. Griffiths, nowhere to go. Stopped right in his tracks. He'll lose a yard. R.J. Mickens, Ray Mickens' son, making the tackle. This is a Clemson team, especially on defense. They have so many sons of former NFLers, brothers of current NFLers. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, they understand the value of this school and the ability to play at the next level. Just Dabo does it the right way, doesn't bring in transfers. You know that you're going to develop in this program. Griffiths, Banks. Picks him about five. Pride and Mickens combining on the stop. Another huge third down. This time it's Clemson trying to get off the field defensively. Wake is one for ten on third down. That is not good. And it's been the pressure. It's been the pressure on third down by this defensive front. Here they come. And Mitch Griffiths got to tell his wide receivers, get ready for this ball. It's coming out fast. Griffiths steps up. Watch oh. out. Now he goes down oh. right at the line oh, of scrimmage. Man. Griffiths did a nice job of leaping over one of his teammates, but didn't see Xavier Thomas. Xavier Thomas out of his peripheral vision. Oh, man. That was eerily familiar to what Garrett Schrader saw last week. Xavier Thomas, bam. Big hit again. Clean hit. Xavier Thomas just healthy now. Playing towards that, playing his best football right now. Hamp Green with a fair catch. He'll make it at the 39. Inside of 10 minutes to go. Back and forth, these two teams in defense. Very few long sustained drives as we have had 11 punts. Shipley on one of his longer runs of the day. It's 11 yards, 11 punts. Six by Wake Forest, five by Clemson. And it is just a, it's become a battle of attrition. Someone's gonna make a huge play in this game. It's bound to happen. When it does, that might be all she wrote. Shipley picks up the first down. Shipley had picked up the first down. Yes. Thank you. Second down. Good look at Dylan Hazen. He's had a really good game from his middle linebacker spot. Clubnick to throw. Good catch by Brinning Stool. And just, you know, an off target throw by Clubnick. And, you know, whether it's been those off target throws that haven't allowed for any yards after the catch or drops or really good plays by the defense. It's been a combination of really all of that for Clemson's offense. And now another third down. For the 26th time today combined, the team is going to attempt to convert a third down. Klubnik to throw. Gets the yards. First down, Tyler Brown. And good for Tyler Brown. The last two times he's touched the ball, he's bobbled it, right? It was the one of the muff, and he dropped the pass. This one, not sure-handed either, but brings it in. He gets the first. Now Clemson wants to move fast. Klubnik. Trying to get to the edge. Does so in enough fashion to pick up about nine. Let's see where they mark it. Maybe eight. Right at the 21. That showed his speed. Right here, Kalen Carson in the corner chasing him, and he just said, I'm going. Like, let's go. And that type of speed. That's rare. They'll mark it at the 20, second down and one. Give to Shipley. 
Sidesteps a tackle. Brought down after a gain of two, but that'll be enough to move the chains. B.J. Williams on the stop. Roberts involved as well. Clock winding inside a seven. ABC, Notre Dame, and Louisville. Coming up at 7.30, Georgia Tech and Miami at eight. Wake Forest has bounced back really nicely after the loss to Georgia Tech in their last game. Let's see if Tech can bounce back after a tough loss last week at home. Fresh set of downs for Clemson. Mismaster at the top of your screen. They'll give it to Shipley. Inside the five, flipped end over end at the one. First and goal, Tigers. Shipley says, let's keep it going. Let's keep let's it going. Let's go. Give me the ball back again. Clemson might have gotten away with a little tug from Sage Ennis. But here they go from the one yard line. Can Wake Forest bow up again? Shipley right into the teeth of that defense and scores. And Will Shipley. Sometimes you need a guy to put the team on their back. In this second half of football, it's been Will Shipley for this Clemson offense. And here's the touchdown. Finally converts from the one yard line. That's what this Clemson crowd's used to seeing. White connects on the PAT. Shipley picked up 33 yards on five carries on that drive. Flip end over end to the one. He says, let's keep it rolling and keep giving me the rock. 17-6, Tigers. Run. Well, Ennis is more of a receiving tight end now, as we've seen. He's made yeah. that transition Hey, today. you know what? It's a good block if it doesn't get called, right? Yep. And it was. Let's take a look at the uh, Saturday MVP. It's brought to you by Sport Clips. It's got to be Will Shipley at this point. Look at the second half yards. You talk about putting yeah. the team on his back. Very slow first half, and he's done in the second. Yeah, and, you know, 86 yards in the second half, and Clemson really has dominated the second half in terms of time of possession, 15 minutes to 8 minutes, and, and total yards, too. You know, they've 183 total yards to Wake Forest, 68. And Wake Forest is going to need some yards here, if, and they're going to need them quickly. Griffiths looking to throw to Banks. Makes the catch. Good pickup on first down. Give him seven. Coach Clawson down two scores. Five and a half to go. Carney. He's able to bounce it outside. Ooh. <laughs> Delivered the hit rather than taking it. Picks up enough for the first down. Give me. Banks. Ball again looked like it fluttered out there. Pride on the coverage. They've been continuously going towards that short side of the field. And you got to think at some point, they got to do a double move. Or they got to go deep and formation into the sideline now. It's going to be cover two up the top. Not going to have the deep shot available up the top of the screen. Thompson brings just four Griffiths underneath. As a receiver at midfield. And the Clemson defensive back took a chance on that one and almost bet right. Yeah, it looked like R.J. Minkins from the safety spot. He, he had a beeline on it. And luckily for Morin, he decided to try to get the interception rather than the blow-up shot. 
Yeah. Nine yards on the pick up second down and one right from midfield. Third down and one road. Griffiths trying to get it, but oh, finally got the second and third level push to get the first down. And that clock is, is running. Klaus says, yeah, let's go, let's go. Clock, got to score twice. Into Clemson territory. Tigers bringing some pressure. It's picked up to Banks. Inside the 40. A lot, you know, a lot of completions here to Banks, but none are over the top. I mean, you're seeing the Clemson secondary give a little cushion, which is good, right? You want to let him catch the ball in front of you. If he does catch it, do not get beat deep in this situation. Wake has all three timeouts on the board. Griffiths rolling to his right. Good pass and catch. That's one of the best passes I think we've seen all day from Griffiths as he hits Keyshawn Williams. Oh, great job. And I think we expected to see more of this. Him rolling out to the right. He's very accurate on the move, throwing the football. And good concentration by Williams to pick up that first, oh, not pick up the first down, but pick up nine yards. Second and one, Griffiths has time. Now he's flushed. Picks up the first down. You, that's a little gimpy there. And again, a lot of time coming off the block. You got to get chunk plays. Griffiths to throw. Now he's trying to get one here to Banks. All kinds of contact, and a flag's going to come out. Shelton Lewis. The freshman from Stockbridge, Georgia, on coverage. Imagine that. True freshman. Covering Jamal Banks down the field. And sometimes that's what you get. You just have to be able to throw the ball downfield. They haven't taken many of these shots, and that was an obvious pass interference call, but you don't get those pass interferences called if you don't take shots down the field. Coaching up the freshman. Tough assignment. In the red zone. We've seen both defenses bow up in the red zone. Can Clemson do it once again? Griffiths looking to throw. Now pressured, he'll be dropped. TJ Parker, speaking of freshman. Well, we knew at some point we'd be calling TJ Parker's name. Just a phenomenal true freshman defensive end could be the best edge guy that Davo Sweeney has had play as a freshman that's what Davo told us this week four sack of the year from Parker second down and 15 they can't get a first down without scoring Carney bounces it outside and a face mask is going to come in here so it'll be half the distance in a first down and he knew it too Denhoff Got a hold of the face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 44. Half the distance to the goal penalty, automatic first down. See Denhoff, good job with the extension of that left hand. And then as he reaches, it's you got to grab a little lower. It just... <laughs> The consternation of you know, a great play for you with the sack, and then you give him a fresh set of downs here again. The only, I guess, consolation is we're under two minutes in this game, and Wake is still down two scores. Claiborne back in the game for the Deeks. Again, Wake has got all three timeouts on the board. They'd rather score without having to use any. Banks held up inside the five. Pride with a nice tackle. Second down and goal. Wake wants to go quickly. Claiborne, he'll score. There he is. Work is it done. Claiborne scores the touchdown. 
for two. Oh, man. And how frustrating is that for Dabo Sweeney with those penalties, the pass interference, and then the face mask. Laidhorn coming out, Carney coming in for Wake. And we'll get a timeout by Clemson. Want to make sure they have the right defense on the field for this conversion. Dabo is chilly's running hot right now. Here's the touchdown. He's lost the edge. Not sure who that was who's supposed to be on the edge. You saw TJ Parker a little bit turned around, but the speed of Devon Claiborne just got there. Dabo imploring his defense to make a stop here on the conversion. Successful two point try here by the Deeks would make it a three point game. Griffiths, five for six for 41 yards on that scoring drive. This play is huge. Really, that entire drive, Clemson did not bring pressure. They sat back in coverage, and Mitch Griffiths picked them apart downfield. Griffiths to throw to the back of the end zone. Banks incomplete. Khalil Barnes on coverage, another freshman. Just had a toe on the white. Good effort by Banks. I do now. Laura to give it a shot. Clemson is able to fall on it. And they gain possession. And that's Hamp Green on the hands team. So Wake Forest still with three timeouts on the board, Mark. With a minute 34. It'll be tight. Yeah. But they could still potentially get the ball back. They'd have to go the length of the field with no timeouts. It's been done before, yes. Chris. Now, let's <laughs> let's see. Done. The first thing you got to do is you got to force a three and out. Yeah. Mafa. Like a freight train gains about three, and Wake Forest calls a quick timeout. Like a crazy freight train. Crazy train. Good call. Way to just tie that all together. Yeah. 
Clawson wondering why on earth the timeout wasn't automatically granted. Look, at he's saying, why do I have to run halfway onto the field to call a timeout? I mean, Clawson should write a book on lobbying the officials. <laughs> he has been doing that from the opening kick today. Here's Clemson's remaining schedule. Got a bye week coming up. Then they go to Miami, then at NC State. Yikes, Notre Dame on ABC. Georgia Tech here at home, North Carolina, and looking for uh, to exact a little revenge at South Carolina to end the year at williams Bryce. It is hard to believe that we are at the halfway mark of the season already. Yeah. It is really flowing by and cooler temperatures. I mean, today's perfect day upstate here in South Carolina. Maffa. Oh, he's got a blocker in front of him. 30. Inside the 20, and he goes down. Smart play as it's a fresh set of downs for Clemson, and that will pretty much do it. Yep. That's what you call game. That's it. Man, I don't know if either offensive coordinator is going to be thrilled by this one. But I tell you who will be. The D corners, Wes Goodwin and Brad Lambert are going to have some good teach tape in this one. Obviously, there's always room for improvement. You got to win these next two and then see, you know, battle for one more win in those last five. Yeah. That is, that is a brutal way to finish this season. But it's it like, gives them a chance to get right. better. Got and a I'll tell you more what, games. if their defense continues to play like this, yeah, they're going to have shots in every game. Like they they will have the ability to be in every game in the fourth quarter if their defense can play like they are today. That's a good point. This is a defense that has obviously fixed a few things during the bye week since they put they allowed Georgia Tech to score 30. Last game. Off again. And Wake Forest will call their final timeout. And a lot of that, too, is cleaning up. I mean, a big part of why Georgia Tech was able to score so many points two weeks ago was the fact that the offense was giving them the football. Yep. And special teams was giving them the football and allowing sacks. And they've cleaned up in a lot of those areas today, especially the turnovers. Just one turnover for Wake Forest in the game. It didn't beat him, didn't come back to haunt him. No points off that turnover. And with this win today, Dabo can match the legendary Frank Howard. 165 wins here at Clemson. Of course, the rock up at the top of the hill. There it is. Frank Howard's rock. I bet that's gotten much cooler over the years. I bet when they told Frank Howard, say, hey, we're going to commemorate you with a rock. Probably wasn't as cool at the time as it is now. I don't, know now the, I don't know the whole story. Maybe maybe <laughs> Frank Howard had a rock. Maybe he had one. He was like, here, I want to put this here. And Frank Howard says, I want to put a rock at the top of the hill. You put a rock at the top of the hill. And now, it's, now it's a staple in this Clemson tradition, and it is really, really cool tradition here at Clemson. I'll tell you what, this entire production of this game from the halftime show to the fans to the pregame has been top-notch our two coaches longtime rivals here in the ACC embrace in midfield it is a hard-fought gutsy win by Dabo Sweeney and his Clemson Tigers far from perfect in many respects but it's another W and they improved to four and two on the year. And for that man right there, gutsy performance by Mitch Griffiths, no doubt about it. Unfortunately for he, 